you had uh, uh, broom, uh, some people in the community who were specialists at making brooms. And these could be made with uh, a special kind of corn grown for the purpose called broom corn. Or they could be made uh, with uh, corn shucks or, you know, various other things that, you know, whatever ingenious ideas you could have of coming up with making a broom. There were people who made mops, basically dust mops, uh, with corn shucks and, and uh, that kind of stuffed through a, a hole in a block of wood and hooked onto a, a handle. And there are lots of different ways that you could, you could make these sort of things. But broom making is another thing that has become kind of, a, kind of an uh, artsy craft sort of thing. And if you go to uh, the Ozark Folk Center down in uh, Mountain View, Arkansas, uh, they have a broom maker. They have a white oak basket maker there. These are, they have a potter. Uh, they have all of these crafts. Uh, but the broom makers are especially popular, and most of the brooms today are not actually used for sweeping. They're used for decorative purposes. You hang them on the wall, and they'll have like different colored strands in the in the broom, and you know they're just sort of pretty, pretty brooms. You know, and who wouldn't rather have a pretty broom than just a regular old, you know, kitchen broom? But uh, and uh, Coopers. There were, lots of, uh, there were lots of Coopers in, uh, in the rural Ozarks, in the rural everywhere in America. And there were different kinds of Coopers. A Cooper, uh, the, the basic thing that a Cooper does is make barrels or containers, not necessarily barrels, but containers for holding stuff. Back in the day when every container wasn't made out of plastic or glass, when you had to use wood, to make most of the containers you had for, for just about anything. And you had uh, at least three different kinds of coopering that was done, three different kinds of coopers. You had your dry, white, and wet coopers. What do you think a dry cooper made? What kinds of containers? Nails and things like that in them. Yeah, nails. Right. Any, anything that back in the 19th century, early 20th century would have been labeled as, as dry goods, a store that you know, sold dry goods. Uh, nails, especially popular. Uh, even uh, you know, foods that aren't wet, you know, fruit or vegetables could be held in, uh, the, in these uh, barrels or, or, or cans. Uh, so there was you know, lots, of, lots of different things that you made, barrels to hold uh, dry goods, they didn't have to be uh, sealed up, you know, to, to, hold, uh, to hold water in. Uh, uh, white coopers, anybody know what a white cooper would have made? Well, a white, it's a good guess, flour, uh, uh, enriched white flour. Uh, a white cooper, generally white coopering referred to making containers to hold liquids that were not shipped anywhere. Uh, for instance, a, like a butter churn would be a product of, of white coopering, uh, or a, uh, like a, a milk pail, a wooden milk pail, something that you just use around the farm or around the house, and you're not actually sealing it up and putting it on a wagon and shipping it to the next state or putting it on a railroad car and and shipping it out like that. Uh, that's what uh, a white coopering refers to. And then the last one, uh, wet coopering, refers to making kegs for uh, beer, uh, for you know, your, your whiskey barrels, casks for wine, any sort of liquid like that that's actually stored and shipped or can be stored and shipped. That's uh, what kind of uh, coopering that's for. And usually in the Ozarks, uh, we'll talk later in the semester about the coming of industry and the, the timber industry and the lumber industry to the Ozarks. There were lots of cooperages that were built around the Ozarks. These were factories where you made barrels. And most of the cooperages that were built in the Ozarks were wet cooperages. They were built for making whiskey barrels or wine casks that that sort of thing. They were, uh, 
they were for that purpose and used all over the world, shipped across the country and, and around the world. So different kinds of... Uh, different. Yeah, there's, there's, there's still a... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how many cooperages there are in the region today. That, certainly not near as many as there once were, but, you know, we, you still have barrels. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we don't, I'm guessing uh, that, you know, that uh, there's not as much of a demand for wooden barrels as there, as there once was. Uh, right, yeah. Right, yeah, in, in the Ozarks, there's quite a bit, yeah, 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 they, yeah, they do. Yeah. Did you? Because a lot of it's aesthetic, so I have a friend who works with that out there. And right. A lot of their contracts are for, yeah. like, decorations and stuff like that. Yeah, that would make sense, too, yeah, yeah. 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 Get your, uh, your whiskey barrel, you know, for the, for the living room and your white oak basket. For the kitchen, you know that that sort of thing. Just have a, a good Ozark lumber theme going on there. All right, but these are real. If you've ever seen uh, these handmade white oak baskets, some of them are just elaborate. I mean, you can tell that that thing is huge. And, and they, uh, the the basket maker uh, that I know, makes uh, has different names for the styles of baskets that he makes and you know apple baskets and this and that you you, you can use them for whatever you want but they're different sizes and you got some of them have handles uh that you know these kind of uh easter basket sort of handles some of them have the handles on the side and stuff like that but you know some of them are really big like apple kind of uh baskets there uh, the kind that cobras rise out of, you know. Uh, we've seen that on on movies. I'm not sure that happened a lot in the Ozarks. 